Thank you. Okay. And we kick off. So welcome everyone. Thank you very much for joining this webinar. It's really great to see you all here. I see very, very different countries from all over the world actually. So our goal for today is to show you some practical things which can hopefully assist your business and give you some new ideas. And uh, for this, Quacklink partnered up with uh, 3D Tracking, and together we will present you our latest arrivals combined with our partners fleet, partners fleet Management Platform. So first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Ivan Jerkovic. I'm an international sales manager in Quacklink based in Europe, and I will host today's webinar alongside with Roydon Michael, who is the CEO of 3D Tracking. So Roydon, please say hello to our attendees. Thanks, Ivan, and hi to everyone who signed in. My name is Roydon Michael, and I'm the CEO here at 3D Tracking. And today, I'm joined by Daniel Nkhlanga from our technical team to assist in questions and answers. On behalf of 3D Tracking, we're proud that QuickLink has given us this opportunity to demonstrate how 3D tracking has integrated the latest CVU devices. We hope you find this both interesting and beneficial. Ivan, back to you. Thank you, Rodan. So uh, as you can see, the webinar itself is divided into six sections. We will have a short intro about Quacklink and 3D tracking. We will show three use cases and we will have a Q&A section in the end. Uh, also, you have a possibility to ask questions during the webinar itself, and for this, you can use the Q&A chat, which you can see below in Zoom, and there our colleagues will answer all your questions. So, let's go to the Quetlink intro. As many of you already know, um, Quetlink Quacklink um, story from previous webinars. Uh, I will just use this opportunity to mention some key points uh, which are important for you to understand how we stand now. So during the past years, you also know that Quacklink became an industry leader in IoT hardware. And uh, last year we deployed almost 4 million devices, which shows that we actually earned our position. And we expect this number to be significantly higher this year. We are also uh, a listed company, which is very important. And we took this step to give an additional assurance to our customers that we have big plans ahead of us and that together we will do something big. Quacklink also operates globally and has customers all over the world. And we manage this by organizing local teams to support our partners. And this is something that they really appreciate. Uh, our team works around the clock to keep up with all the demands that, that we received. So we have support 24 seven. Um, our portfolio, which, is, which already covers all popular niches grows constantly. And this is due to the constant communication with our clients and monitoring the market trends. Uh, results that you see are something that we are about to mention in this webinar. Also, our focus on EMEA market is a strategic decision for us because actually one third of the devices we deploy are in this market. So to support this, we actually have a dedicated R&D center that works closely with our sales department. And now I would like to invite Roydon also to tell us a bit more about his company, 3D Tracking. Royden, please. Thanks, Ivan. 3D Tracking is a global telematics service provider with 17 years experience in the telematics market. Our software platform supports partners and end clients across more than 100 countries worldwide with over half a million vehicles reporting into our platform every day. At 3D Tracking, we focus on cutting edge functionality and the highest levels of support, ensuring that we provide our partners 
with a class-leading telematics platform. Thanks, Ivan. Back to you. Thank you, Royden, for the intro. And uh, now let's go to our new product lineup. Thank you. So the models you see are direct successors of our most popular devices, which you can see in the bar below, but with the LTE Cat1 technology. The first in line is GV58 CEU, which is an entry device. And even though we call it basic, actually it's not. So as you can see, it has multiple inputs and outputs. It has Bluetooth, one wire, it can monitor driver behavior and all other standard data that comes from telematics devices. The one wire and BLE and multiple accessories make it very expandable, whether it is with Quacklink accessories or third party accessories. So you can actually do a lot of things with this so called basic device. The next in line is the GV305 CEU. And as you can see, it, it has many, many inputs and outputs, and it has also two serial ports, so 485 and 232. And this one I call an, the accessories device, because for every application where you need a lot of sensors, this is the device to go. The next device is GV350 CEU, and this is our pro advanced device. This is because it has dual CAN bus and it covers light vehicles, light commercial vehicles, trucks, and machinery also, since it has J1939 protocol also. Important thing to mention about this device is that it also has an option to read DTC codes. The last one, GV355CU, is the flag flagship device and it is intended for trucks as it has K-Line and most importantly, it has remote tachograph download option. All these devices have BLE and one wire, which is very important. Also, they share a unified protocol. So if you integrate one device, all the common functions will work on others too, which make it, makes it easier to use. So, I suggest now that we move on to our first use case. So as, as you can imagine, car rental is a business that has its own set of issues. Um, they can be organizational, they can be connected to security or all other things that can make car rental employees life harder. Uh, I will give you a real life example actually. Um, I had a problem with the rental office not so long ago. I booked a vehicle on Monday morning and when I arrived, the car was not there. The office just opened and the car was supposed to be dropped off during the night using those automatic drop off systems where you just leave the keys in the box because the office is closed. And it turned out that the driver had an accident and couldn't take the car back. So, the drop-off confirmation through the system is something that was really necessary in this case. Also, the automatic crash detection and reconstruction would be very handy in this situation. The company would be aware that something happened during the night and later the insurance claim also would be much easier because of the high frequency buffer feature, which is available on all the models that you saw today. On the other hand, the vehicle, maintenance, the, the vehicle maintenance is becoming a major topic. For this, some companies are even offering uh, some cashbacks or discounts if the driver is not driving aggressively. So for, for this solution, actually, we chose the GV58 CEU and uh, it monitors driver behavior in this case, accidents and all other standard data we connected the wireless relay for additional security and a wireless ID key fob for driver identification. So can we move to the next slide, please? Here you can see a small schematics of this, this solution. So you have the GV58CU in the center, 
a wireless relay for cutoff, ignition cutoff, and you have a wireless key fob. Of course, the high, high frequency um, crash uh, monitoring is also there. For this to be more clear, I invite Royden again to show us how all this looks in 3D tracking platform. Thanks, Ivan. To monitor arrivals and departures at rental locations, each location can be set up as a point of interest on the 3D tracking platform. Every time a vehicle enters or exits one of these locations, an alert can be sent to the relevant user in the platform. These alerts can be set up to notify the user. Plus, the alert can be sent by SMS, email, or via the 3D tracking mobile application. In addition, a report of all entry and exit events can be generated on demand. This can be generated as a highly customizable HTML report like you can see on the screen, or also as Excel, CSV, and PDF. Additionally, reports can be scheduled which means they generate automatically and are then emailed to the relevant user. The scheduled reports are also available via the 3D tracking API, so the rental company can automatically receive the data into their systems. With regards to vehicle abuse and unreported accidents, here you can see numerous trips, some of which the scores are less than perfect. If we look at the trip details, we can see the scoring events and their impact on the score. And if we look at the detailed data, we can use the filter to see exactly where these events occurred and click on them to see where they happened on the map. Event reports can be generated on demand or scheduled for automatic generation. And these reports highlight the time, the date, and the location of these events. In the event of an accident, the GV58CVU device can also send high resolution data from before the crash, the crash point itself, and after the event. When all this data is taken, it helps build a picture of exactly what happened leading up to the event and what happened afterwards. This data allows the rental car company to verify the event details and to provide evidence for any claims with an insurer or with the rental company. To remotely disable a vehicle's engine when the tracking device is used in conjunction with a wired or wireless relay, it's as simple as hovering over the commands icon, selecting engine cutoff, and confirming the message. Once the engine is disabled, it's possible to use the same process to re-enable the engine again. If a driver of a vehicle is using one of the new CEU devices and is carrying a Bluetooth tag, the tracking device can report that tag in the data it transmits to the platform. The driver module allows a fleet owner to capture all their drivers and their details, including name, phone number, email address, and any custom data they wish to add manually, such as driver license expiry date, driver hiring date, etc. The Bluetooth tag MAC address can also be added as a driver tag, which means each time the device reports that MAC address, we can assign the relevant driver to that vehicle. Here, you can see where the driver is changing between trips. As one driver finishes, and a new driver climbs into the vehicle and presents their tag, that driver becomes assigned to the vehicle, and this ensures that the correct driver is assigned to the correct trip. Okay, Ivan, back to you. Thanks, Royden. So I think now we can move to our second use case. And 
this is the stolen vehicle recovery, which is always a hot topic in every city, every continent. But also, we know that to protect the vehicle with the one tracking device works to some extent only. So the risk is that the car thieves can outsmart the one tracker solution by finding and removing it with tools like sniffers and causing the challenges that you can see on the screen. As one of the main ones, we need to mention the recovery rate. Some studies show that less than 20% of vehicles are actually recovered. This low number tells us that there is a lot of space to do business in this niche and that new solutions are always welcome. And one of the main reasons for this is the delay in notification. As we know, time is crucial for retrieving stolen assets and vehicles. Uh, we understood this pain point and overcame it by introducing this SVR combo solution. This solution overcomes most of the theft methods used lately, such as uh, uh, key theft or duplication, relay attacks, sniffers, jammers, um, even car computer hacking, or, or the combination of all these methods. So for you to understand how SVR combo works, we have the next slide. And this combination can be done with various devices, but for this particular case, we chose again GV58CU and our popular asset tracker GL50B. This also means that this combo can also work as a part of a car rental solution we saw before. In addition to the data you saw, the main device has jamming and towing detection, and it connects to the ghost device, which is hidden somewhere in the vehicle via Bluetooth. The second device is very compact and has a size approximately like a cigarette lighter. So the deal here is once the BLE connection between the devices is broken by removing or the tempering the main one, and in this case, it's GV58CEU, the ghost device wakes up and picks up the work. This way, we introduced something like a multi-layer protection and increased the recovery rate significantly. So again, back to 3D tracking platform to see how all this works. Royden? Thanks, Ivan. As you've already heard, vehicle theft is a significant risk for vehicle and fleet owners. To show how the QuickLink solution can help with the recovery of stolen vehicles, here we have a typical scenario where a GV58CEU is set up as the primary tracker, while a GL50B is set up as the secondary dormant device. There's constant communication between these two devices. And as soon as the primary device is removed, the secondary device will alert the server of a possible theft situation and begin tracking. Here you can see on entering the tunnel, the GV58CEU device was then disabled. You can see the break in the tracking. Here's the different colored line of the GL50B. It immediately picked up tracking as it got out of the tunnel. And here you can see the detailed tracking data. You can also see the SVR active flag that 3D tracking has applied to the device because it knows that there's a stolen vehicle situation. Once the situation is resolved and the GV58 is returned to the vehicle, the flag is removed, the GL50B stops its reporting and becomes dormant again. And the GV58 carries on with its tracking. Because the GL50B is battery operated and because of its small size, there are no wires required for installation and the device can be installed in difficult to find places in the vehicle. Thieves would assume that once they've disabled the primary device, the vehicle is no longer tracked, so would not be looking for a secondary device. This makes the new SVR feature of the GV58 CEU highly effective at recovering vehicles. Thanks, Ivan. Back to you.
Thank you, Royden. Okay, so now we have our last use case for the day, and this is the call chain. So in terms of the overall solution, this is the most complicated one, as cold chain is a very complex industry. Many things can go wrong during the transportation of these sensitive goods. So we have things like cargo damage or theft, spoiled goods due to the refrigeration system malfunction, for example, are some of the most common ones. And preventing this task greatly impacts the cold chain business. So using telematic solutions with a lot of additional sensors is now a must. Uh, also, more and more logistics companies need to share the live status of goods with their clients who actually want to make sure that everything is okay during the transport. And this requires a great deal of transparency, which can only be achieved by a telematics or IoT solution. In the center of this use case, we have our Pro Advanced device, and that is GV350 CEU. It is connected to a BLE temperature and humidity sensor, a door opening sensor, and in this case, a snapshot camera. So the idea behind this is to show who and where opened the cargo doors. This function can also be connected to geofences, which would act as safe zones in this case. So if the door is open outside of those, the alarm would trigger and notify the company. All this is happening while we are still monitoring temperature and humidity inside the truck. Also, since we are using a tracker that has a built-in CAN bus feature, we can monitor the performance, fuel consumption, and the DTC codes of the truck itself. This is because we all know that the maintenance and vehicle longevity, fuel expenses, and all other things in times of crisis are a major topic these days. So let's see once again how all this looks on the platform and how all this data can be aggregated, aggregated and shown to the customers. Royden, back to you. Thanks. Thanks, Ivan. Cold chain logistics requires accurate and detailed temperature monitoring to help transporters ensure that chill, frozen, and deep frozen temperatures are maintained throughout a transport cycle. Using the one-wire temperature sensor from Quicklick, the GV350 CEU device can provide a detailed temperature history. In addition to the graphs, a temperature report can provide a detailed history as well as a web-based report or as Excel, CSV, or PDF. An alert can be set up, and if the temperature goes outside the high or low range, the alert will generate. To provide even greater insight, the temperature can be combined with other data, such as points of interest or digital inputs or CAN bus sensors. In this case, an alert has been set up to warn the transporter if the temperature moves outside of the allowed range, while at the same time, the rear door must be open and the vehicle must be outside of the depot point of interest. When all these criteria are true at the same time, the alert is generated. In order to gain greater insight into the status of a vehicle throughout its journeys, the onboard diagnostics or CAN bus can be utilized. The GV350 device can read the CAN bus in the vehicle and provide a range of sensor data, such as RPM, fuel consumed, fuel level, and coolant temperature. Let's look at some of this data for a more extended period of time. 
Here, we are able to look at the fuel data for six days. You can see how the fuel data fluctuates because the fuel moves around the tank. But 3D tracking has developed a smoothing algorithm that helps iron out these fluctuations for more accurate fuel reporting. All the same reports and alerts are available for the CAN bus data that we saw in the temperature reporting, including the compound alert and the compound report to cater for those complex scenarios. The final demonstration of the G50, G350 CEU relates to the DTC or diagnostic trouble codes that are reported by the vehicle. When the vehicle's engine warning light showing on the dashboard, the severity of the problem could result in damage to the engine or to the vehicle if it continues to be driven. When a DTC code is reported by the QuakeLink device to the 3D tracking platform, it is identified and logged. Each subsequent reporting of the same code allows the transporter to know how long that code has been active. When the vehicle is repaired and the code is cleared on the vehicle canvas, the platform can also be updated. Here you can see the code is cleared and there are now no more active DTC codes. If the code is subsequently reported again, it will appear once more as an active code with a new start date. Okay, Ivan, that's it from me. Thanks very much. Thank you, Royden. Wonderful, this looks great. So these are our three use cases for today. The idea is to do this fast, to give you some main points, main ideas, and now we are going to the Q&A section. We had uh, quite a lot of questions in the, in the Q&A panel, but I will just repeat some of those. And uh, I guess Royden also has some questions that he wants to, to answer, but let me go with the first one. Uh, the question was, what was the difference what is the difference between GV350 CEU, the model that we just showed, and our model GV350 MG? So the, there are two main differences, and uh, GV350 CEU is actually a CAT1 device, and 350 MG is a CAT M1 device. But also, uh, GV350 MG is intended for trucks mainly. So it, it has uh, J1939 and uh, it's produced for, for monitoring trucks while 350 CEU has uh, an option to monitor light vehicles and light, light commercial vehicles also. So this is very important. I know it's just a couple of letters difference but the difference between these two devices is quite big. So uh, Roydon, did you catch some, some interesting questions? that you saw in the Q&A? Ivan, there's a couple of questions around fuel. So let me deal with those. Um, yeah. One of the questions relates to the fuel fluctuations that you saw in the graphs and also the accuracy of, uh, of the fuel data and also ask what's the best method for measuring fuel consumption. So let me deal with the first piece. When measuring the fuel level, there are no 100% accurate uh, methods of measuring fuel because the fuel moves around the tank as the vehicle drives. So any fuel level measuring, even when using the CAN bus, which is the vehicle manufacturer's built-in system, is going to have a level of fluctuation as you saw on the platform. This is the reason that 3D tracking developed a smoothing algorithm to try and iron out those fluctuations. Every time the vehicle turns a corner, or drives up and down a hill, the fuel is moving. So without an algorithm, it's very difficult to do accurate fuel measurement using the fuel level. That brings me on to the second piece, where if you want to measure consumption, such as the amount of fuel used in a day or the amount of fuel used in a trip, the best method for doing that is to use the fuel used metric, which comes out of the canvas. This is the vehicle measuring the fuel as it moves through the engine. 
So it's almost 100% accurate in terms of measuring consumption. Hopefully that deals with a couple of the questions that we saw in the Q&A. Um, another one yeah. similarly related to Canvas can is I, how many parameters? Just, yeah. Can I just interrupt you because uh, there were some questions about fuel also for, for us. And uh, the question was uh, whether Quackly has its own fuel sensor. And uh, yes, we do. We have an ultrasonic fuel sensor accessory. And my question to you, actually, Royden, about the, uh, about the smoothing of, of, of data. So what you men mentioned also works for like ultrasonic fuel sensors, standard fuel sensors, all of those, right? Correct. Any fuel data that we're receiving, regardless of the source of that data, can have the smoothing algorithm applied. I should add, the better the data we get, the better result you'll get from the smoothing algorithm. But to answer your question, yes, the Quaklink ultrasonic sensor will also work with the um, smoothing algorithm. Great, thank you. you. You can continue, please. Sorry, I interrupted you. The other question around the Canvas data was um, how many Canvas parameters 3D tracking can support? On the demonstration, I think there are 10 or 11 uh, parameters in that vehicle. And ultimately, there isn't actually a limit. As many sensors that the Canvas supports can be added onto the 3D tracking platform, plus the layout can be optimized. So the data can be laid out in a way with headings, um, like um, parameters grouped together, such as fuel, uh, temperature related ones. Um, it, it's fully customizable as to how it looks and feels. Um, and there's no limits to the number of parameters. Ivan, let me pass back to you. Great. Yeah. Um, actually, I would like to use this opportunity to um, invite our colleagues from marketing to share our contacts. Uh, so the con my contact and Royden's contact, because I guess we will have uh, more questions in the future. And uh, also, I would like to, to share another question, which I saw, and I guess probably it is connected to the driver behavior um, in, in car rental use case we saw. And the question was, how does the device, you, uh, what does the device use to detect harsh events? So uh, yeah, we, we have an internal accelerometer in, in, in every device and we also use GPS. So uh, also there is a combination that you use both at the same time. So I, I hope this, this answers the, the question. Uh, and I had another one, which I saw is uh, about GV305 and whether it can monitor CAN bus data. So yeah, we, we said that it has uh, many inputs and outputs. It has serial ports and actually you can connect uh, an accessory to it. So uh, it's CAN100 that is a Quacklink accessory, and you can read the CAN data from it. So I, I guess if you have a situation when you need a lot of external sensors, uh, wired sensors, most of all, and CAN bus at the same time, you would use maybe GV305 with a CAN100 Quacklink dongle. So uh, this is something that I saw as, as interesting. And uh, Royden, do, do you have something else that you would like to share? Ivan, there's one more question here that we, um, we can deal with, which says, yep. how quickly does the data update on the 3D tracking page? So the data rate is first set on the Quaklink device, either the FRI or ERI message, which is doing the tracking data, and then the GT CAN message, which is doing the CAN bus data. And then the 3D tracking platform um, can be set to refresh at whatever rate the client is looking for. Um, so if the device is sending every minute, the page refresh rate can also be set to one minute and that way, when the page refreshes, it's always pulling the latest data. If the device is set to send at a slightly faster rate, it is possible to get the page to speed up as well. But keep in mind, there's always a trade-off um, with regards to performance when the page is constantly downloading data, especially for large numbers of vehicles. 
Ivan, that's it from me. Okay, so in general, I think we covered most of the things and uh, I still see some, some questions arriving to Q&A. Uh, again, I suggest to, to share uh, our contacts. So um, my email and Royden's email address because we'll have some more information for you later on and for you to, to ask some more questions. And um, maybe if you if you wish, I can I can leave just a little bit more time to see if there is another question which could be interesting for everybody. If no, I think we can we can maybe conclude this this webinar. It was really fast. We didn't want to take. Uh, a lot of your time, but again, we wanted to give you a lot of information. So we are here as always, Quacklink and 3D Tracking. We are partners for, for a long time. We do some great things together and you are always welcome to reach us for every, every questions, doubts or projects that you might have, we will assist you. And I guess this is it with the questions for today. Yeah. Okay, so feel free to, to write us, to contact us, to ask everything which could be interesting for you and uh, add us on LinkedIn, add Royden, add myself, add Quacklink and 3D Tracking. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's webinar. I hope you, you got a lot of information uh, that could help you. And I think this would be it for today. Thank you from the side of Quacklink and 3D tracking. Royden, if you wish to say something at the very end, please. Thank you, Ivan. Um, again, on behalf of 3D Tracking, I'd like to thank Quicklink for the opportunity to present our platform today using the latest and greatest devices from Quicklink. Um, and I look forward to doing more of these presentations with you in the future. Thank you, everyone, for attending and have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Have a nice day.